Hello and welcome to my channel. In this one I'm going to do a pencil portrait of Novak Djokovic, the greatest tennis player of all time, but I'm going to use a black and white pencil on toned paper. So I decided to use a slightly different approach to drawing this portrait because most of my portraits are done on plain uh, white paper. Here I'm going to use grey toned paper and there are some advantages uh, using that approach because you already have a mid tone so you need to add a black pencil for the darker values and white pencil for the lighter values and uh, theoretically it should be easier to establish that range of value and uh, it should make the shading process shorter and quicker. So I'm doing the initial sketch with a graphite pencil, but then I'm going to switch to two pencils. I'm going to use the Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil and the Faber-Castell Polychromos white colored pencil. The paper I'm going to work on is a Fibriano uh, toned paper called clay, and the size of the paper is around 11 times 8 inches. As for the blending tools, I'm mostly going to use flat brushes and I'm also going to use a kneaded eraser for erasing and cleaning up here and there. As for the reference, that's going to be included in the description if you want to check it out. I like this reference because of the position of his head and I thought that it would make for a nice composition as a vignette and uh, I like his uh, tenacious uh, competitive look in this photo so I thought that it would be a great reference for my portrait. Another thing that's good about it is that generally drawing portraits uh, when viewed from, uh, from the side is maybe a little bit less challenging but it doesn't always have to be the case. Anyway, I switch to a black colored pencil now and I'm going to start working on the hair. I'm drawing the outline of the hair here by making these small short marks with a sharp pencil. And he has straight spiky, uh, short straight spiky hair. So to imitate the appearance of that hair I first did the outline of the hair or the top edge of the hair and I mostly follow the direction in which the hair grows but I try to vary the angle a little bit just to introduce a little bit more variation so that it doesn't look too uniform but so that it looks a bit messy and spiky in places and after that I moved on to this middle portion where I just need to cover it with uh, a lot of uh, darker values. Now in some areas the hair is going to appear darker so I don't really have to worry too much about the texture. I can just shade it a little bit more quickly and carelessly. In others like this top part I have to be a bit more careful about the texture and I have to make sure that I pull marks which are a little bit shorter and that follow the direction of the hair. The reason why this is important is because even when I blend on top of it uh, with a brush uh, that will soften the marks and uh, it will soften their texture a little bit but some of those lines will still remain visible and if I just uh, go through it a little bit too quickly and messily it won't look right so I want to make it look realistic and I need to lay down the, uh, the texture of the hair a bit more carefully and I need to make sure that the length of the strokes matches roughly matches the length of his hair and the direction in, in which it grows or, or in which it is combed. So uh, once that is done I'm going to do some blending with brushes and uh, I can use two types of brushes I normally have a couple of different types of brushes lying around uh, most of the time I use these uh, soft synthetic brushes which blend very nicely and softly so you can see how everything is becoming a bit uh, darker and a bit softer with these marks being less um, conspicuous 
but uh, when you use a hard uh, bristle brush it tends to push the material into the grain of the paper it's a little bit more rough but it also leaves a bit more of that texture so you can use that to your advantage you can kind of alternate between the two different types of brushes so here I switch to a white colored pencil because I want to put it put in this tiny catch light in the eye and uh, I want to establish that lighter area and then I'm going to work around it that's going to be one of the brightest details on my portrait I'm also going to add a little bit of that white pencil to the rest of the eye and maybe to some other parts of the face like for example on the tip of the nose and maybe a few other places a bit later these are some parts of the face which will be a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter and yeah, they will have some reflections and I'll try to work around them to establish a nice contrast with them so I'm doing the eyebrows here and uh, my approach here will be to draw the eyes and uh, some other details first and then do the shading on the larger parts of the face. You can also do it the other way around. Here I think um, because you already have that mid-tone it'll be easier to add a bit of value here and there to better define the topography of the face a bit later once I've done some of these details. So I drew the pupil of the eye, that's the darkest bit on the portrait or one of the darkest bits and then I'm going to work around it drawing the, the iris and I'm trying to work around the catch light making sure that I don't muddy these two colors so that my catch light, that, that my highlights remain bright. I'm also adding a little bit more shadow here above the upper eyelid because his eyes are kind of deep set. There's, a, there's quite a bit of shadow under this eyebrow area and this uh, part of the eye socket is uh, a little bit uh, more deep set and a little bit darker so that this shadow area here almost merges merges with the eyebrows and now uh, defining the um, the lower edge of the eye and maybe adding a few eyelashes there although I can add those in later as well as for the iris uh, I did shade it but it may need a little bit more value I'm just going to do a little bit of work on the mouth now I'm going to shade this opening of the mouth which is the darkest and then I'm just going to uh, add some details on the lips a bit later so I started talking about the iris um, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to gauge how how much value you need for the eyes because because there is such a thing as value interaction because when you shade around something it starts to look lighter in comparison uh, to the surrounding area so sometimes you may need to go back and revisit some parts of your portrait add a bit more value there uh, in order to make sure that they are dark enough in in relation to other elements. So drawing the nostril here and uh, now I'm going to draw around this uh, I'm going to go over the outer edge of the nose here making sure that I get the shape right and the whole left edge of the face is a little bit darker there's a bit of shadow there around that left edge so I drew a darker line there and then I'm gonna shade a little bit next to it and make a sort of a gradual transition from that left edge of the face towards the middle also adding a bit more value around the eye and kind of moving my way down towards the cheekbone and the cheek area which I'm going to get to later because that's going to require a bit more shading that's uh, part of the face where there is 
a lot of shading to be done in order to explain the shape of the face to the viewer. Here at the bottom on the chin and the jaw I started uh, adding uh, a little bit of stubble and a little bit of value. I'm going to talk about that a bit later because that part is also, also kind of interesting. So as you can see I'm adding a bit of value here on the left side of the of the face or the left edge of the face on the forehead on the nose tentatively adding a bit of value here and there the tip of the nose also needs to be a little bit darker here and that makes these highlights on the nose stand out even better the reason why we have those on the tip of the nose is because the, the tip of, of the nose itself is kind of a round surface just uh, doing a little bit more shading on the eye again so that you can see you can see that I'm kind of all over the place <coughs> I skip from one part of the face to the other and uh, that's sometimes a result of me trying to gauge how much value I need in different parts of the face and sometimes I'm just kind of procrastinating in, in, instead of just focusing on uh, one single part of the face that I need to draw or shade rather. Now he has a bit of a stubble uh, on the on the jaw and the mustache area and uh, there are a couple of interesting things to say about this because when you have really short stubble like this you can make your life easier by just dragging the pencil and allowing it to work for you because it will produce a little bit of texture that kind of looks like very short beard and then you can refine it by introducing some short strokes but um, just by dragging your pencil you will both shade that area and establish a te texture that kind of looks like stubble so that's very useful and another interesting thing about beards and stubble is that um, every uh, on every man it kind of grows differently in terms of distribution and which part of the face and how much of the face it covers so that's another thing that you need to keep in mind if you want to capture the likeness of the person so just like eyebrows for example have their own shape uh, it's the same thing with the with the stubble and with the beards they're a big part of or at least they are a part of capturing the likeness of a person. Now you see that I'm trying to do a little bit more work on the hair here, here uh, in the middle and to the right and again because the hair is a little bit shorter here and we can see a little bit more of the scalp showing through I'm being careful to pull these uh, shorter tapering strokes to imitate the texture of the hair because I can't just go back and forth and drag my pencil I would create a very ugly texture that would be difficult to fix and I don't really want that so I'm just gonna be a little bit more patient and a bit more careful here in those lighter areas and I, I can draw these darker areas at the top uh, a bit uh, more quickly because I don't have to worry about them as much. So I'm just uh, being careful here around the neck because the hair is very short there and uh, trying to make a nice transition here between the neck and the back of the head because he has a very peculiar shape of the head with a kind of an elongated neck uh, as well as the, the head itself so I'm trying to capture that shape and I don't want to spoil it by uh, not drawing the shape of the hair as well properly so now I'm doing a bit of uh, blending but this time I'm blending with that harder bristle brush because I want more of the texture to show through and I'm just adding a few more marks here at the top around the bangs area and 
and uh, making sure that I have enough value on the forehead area. So on the forehead, I first did a bit of initial shading with a pencil, then I did a bit of blending with a brush, and when you blend with a brush, that does two things. It softens the texture, but at the same time, it adds a little bit of value. So you can make shading a bit quicker that way. But if you feel like you need to add some more texture back on top of that to imitate the uh, texture of the skin and uh, wrinkles and pores and things like that, you can always go back and add a few more marks and do a little bit more work using a pencil. And because the skin has its own texture and it, obviously um, you want the portrait to stand out against the paper, not only in terms of value, but also in terms of the textures. Um, now I'm doing a little bit more work on this cheek and the cheekbone area. The shape of the face is not quite there. A lot of shading still needs to be done. But I do feel like because of the tone paper I'm making a bit more pro progress a bit more easily. Here I'm dragging my pencil and adding a bit more of that short hair around the lips and on the jaw area. So like I said, basically I'm doing two things at once. I'm both shading this lower part of the face which needs to be darker, but at the same time I'm also creating a texture that kind of looks like stubble and I'm going to need more of that on the jaw here <clears throat> especially on the lower part of the jaw which needs to be much darker and in order to make that part darker I'm going to need to use a bit more pressure I can't I won't really be able to just hold the pencil sideways like this and uh, use gentle circular motions. I'm going to have to change my approach slightly but right now I'm trying to produce this texture that looks like stubble and once again uh, you have to pay attention to how it grows on every individual because on every individual it's going to look different. With Djokovic he, he seems to have a lot of that stubble around the very chin and the tip of the jaw and on the sides of the chin kind of extending from the mustache area that's sort of what it looks like to me I think I've already done a decent job at imitating that so I'm going to give that a short break and do a little bit more work with a white colored pencil to do some of the lighter details on the collar of his shirt. That's another reason why this uh, white pencil will come in handy because um, it'll be easier to make some of those lighter parts of the shirt stand out. And I, when I do these portraits in black and white pencil, I like to use the white pencil very, very sparingly. So initially I thought I was only going to use it for the eye and a few other highlights, but I decided that maybe I need to add a tiny bit of that here uh, on the cheekbones because I really wanted that part to stand out and... Um, I realized that I just I just wasn't getting there uh, by using regular shading with my pencil. And also this part of the nose here needed to be a little bit darker so I just decided to go back in and add a few touches of white pencil here and there on those areas where I needed to create more contrast and make those parts of the face a bit lighter. So rather than shading those parts of the face which I already shaded trying to make them even darker I simply added 
a bit of lighter value using a white pencil on those parts of the face which needed to be lighter and that's obviously one of the advantages of using toned paper because if I were working on white paper I would have to keep pushing myself to add more value to create more contrast so that to, to add more range of value so that I would have enough value contrast to explain the shape of the face. Here, just by adding some lighter areas, I was able to sort of increase or extend that range of value and achieve the same effect uh, simply by using two different pencils. So I think that went pretty well. I'm just making some minor adjustments on the face, on the mouth and uh, some other areas. The face is, as you can see, mostly done. It's mostly defined in terms of the shape. Uh, the, I, I need to do a little bit more work on the jaw area and of course I need to shade the neck and then finish. Uh, finish the clothes, the, the shirt. But now I'm going to refine the stubble here at the bottom because I need to make this part a bit darker. And I've initially laid down that texture just by dragging my pencil, but now I'm going in and adding some really small marks uh, because it's. Uh, because now I need, don't really need to do quite as much work if I, as if I tried to do that initially. Uh, it would be a lot slower. So just doing a little bit more work on the ear now. Because I need to shade this area, this transition between the ear and the face to better define the shape and the width of the face. And adding a little bit more value here. And defining the shape of the ear a bit better. So here I started shading the neck. And this part of the neck or this edge to the right is going to be a little bit darker, plus there's going to be a, a few shorter hairs there as well. So his neck is kind of twisting to the side, so I'm going to try to capture those wrinkles uh, that form around those larger muscles. And then if I feel like I produced too much texture by shading, I can just go over it with a brush. And of course, another effect of the brush is that it will make things a little bit darker and speed up the shading process. And finally, I will also add a few more touches of that white pencil on those lighter parts of the neck. Because some parts of the face will appear lighter and glossy because of the sweat, not just because of the shapes. So you want to capture not just the shape, but uh, also the state of the body and the face at that particular moment. And this photo was probably taken during a tennis match. And now I'm going to do a little bit more work on this collar and finish the portrait off uh, by drawing the, uh, the shirt here. It's going to be a vignette, and I like vignettes because they allow me to focus on the, the elements that I find important. It allows me to create a more flexible and more balanced composition. And I have only done a couple of portraits of Novak Djokovic, I think, and both of those were done way back, I think, several years ago. <clears throat> So I think this one was long overdue. I may even do a colored pencil portrait one day, 
but I, I wanted to try out this technique a little bit and I think it turned out pretty good so some people obviously will not uh, like my description of him as the best tennis player of all time even though that's honestly what he is there's nobody quite like Djokovic neither in terms of his overall achievements uh, nor in terms of his skills he's just a perfect tennis player without any flaws or weaknesses in his game kinda like um, Michael Jordan of tennis and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of value here at the bottom like I said I wanna fade it towards the edges of the paper, don't want to work all the way to the edge I'm just going to add a few suggestions of those uh, of those wrinkles in the shirt at the back but there's really no need to <coughs> over shade or over explain things because this part of the portrait is obviously less important and I don't want it to draw too much focus I'm also going to try to minimize the amount of texture here so I'm going to do a lot of work with a brush and now the portrait is done I'm going to put my signature here on the left for the sake of balance and that's it. Don't forget to check out my other videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm just doing a little bit of cleaning up with a kneaded eraser. If you want to see longer videos and more content, you should check out my Patreon. So that's it for this one. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.